are live. Welcome to Interview with the Man. Today, I'm joined by super special guests. We're here with Ryan from Elevate Cyber. He's going to be talking about how to make $200,000 a year in cybersecurity while getting educated from the comfort of your home at a fraction of the cost and time it would take you in a four-year university degree. But before we get going, don't forget this upcoming Monday, we are going live with the Masculine Empowerment Network. We are literally one week away. Don't forget and check this out real quick. I am not a man that believes in luck. I am not a man that believes in destiny. I believe in discipline. I believe in being powerful. I believe in being self-reliant. I believe in mentorship. And most importantly, I believe in me. I refuse to be a victim. And I know that every day I make a choice, a choice to be better than before, a choice to do what is right for me, a choice to not live as a slave to my emotions. And all of these choices will lead me to the burden that is heavy. And that burden is greatness. We live in the most prosperous times in human history. There is no excuse that outweighs the greatness that is in you that can get you the life that you want. Every day, we must make a choice to improve our lives or to be victims of inaction. The price of greatness is one we must pay every day, and it is a choice that I always make. Although the path we walk can be lonely, it is the most important thing we must do. Sometimes when you choose the life of greatness, you need a little help. I tell me. The best part of my journey is that I'm not alone, and neither are you. That's right. This upcoming May 8th, we're one week away from the launch of the Masculine Empowerment Network. Ryan here from Elevate Cyber is a leader in the community. We're going to be talking about that and so much more. If you're not on the waiting list, join us now. There's over 100 people on the waiting list. We're locked and loaded. Go to MasculineEmpowermentNetwork.com. Put your best email address in here. Click right here to save your spot. It's free. You don't have to pay anything right now. Your, your spot is saved. That way, when the five-day enrollment period is over, you'll have a chance to get in. Okay. Enrollment is May 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, 12th of midnight. It's over. And again, what do you get when you sign up for the Masculine Empowerment Network? I'll show you exactly what you get right here. You get the pinnacle course that's changed so many lives, Body Language Mastery. This is a course on how to read women's body language. Okay. 
you get 60 webinars, live webinars with experts in Money Muscles Game and Frame. Today, we have a money, a money expert on today. Ryan is going to be talking about that in his presentation. What is a webinar? A webinar is when you tune into our sessions on Zoom, and a presenter will start with the first half of his presentation talking about his expertise in Money Muscles Game or Frame. And then the second half is the Q&A session where your custom questions receive custom answers. If you can't attend these, that's okay because they're all recorded and stored on a database that you get access to for the rest of your life. 200 hours of past webinars are given to you immediately upon signing up, and then all these other ones will be here as well. So even if you miss out, you can watch it at your convenience from your phone, iPod, laptop, whatever the case may be. Number four is a secure Telegram chat. This is really, really, really important. You just get to cross notes with other guys in this industry who are focusing on the core four, money, muscles, game, and frame. And all your questions are answered immediately. It's like having a, you know, like a no BS Google in your pocket at all times. <clears throat> uh, you get direct access to me, MLD. And then number six, you get access to the open course access sale. This is where I'm actually going to make all my courses open and available to the members who sign up for the Masculine Empowerment Network. So whatever course you want to get, we can sort you out. So all of this and more is available to you, but you got to go to MasculineEmpowermentNetwork.com and get on the waiting list right now. We have the full schedule here as well. Let me show this to you guys real quick to show you exactly what we are bringing to the table because the schedule is absolutely jam-packed and the value is going to be through the roof. Literally everything you want as a man, Money Muscles Game Frame, we're going to be providing to you guys uh, at, this, at this very first session of the Masculine Empowerment Network. What's funny, it's because it's... Uh, it's completely all inclusive, and we still have 40 more webinars to go after this one. So take a quick look right here, and you can see the schedule. This is the entire schedule right here. It's crazy. It's so jam-packed. Okay. So uh, if, the, if you look at the colors, it's money, muscles, game, and frame, right? And so... <clears throat> We starting off the week here with Andrew, the legal mindset. He's going to be talking about the Asia pill, how moving to Asia can be a big change in a lot of your guys' lives. Inner masculine, we talking about inner game. David Bond's going to be talking about deal, uh, building deep competence. Ryan, our guest today, Elevate Cyber, is going to be talking about breaking into cybersecurity for complete beginners. Proud masculine, we talk about be selfish and live life and life improves. This is about frame. Off the kingdom, we talk about game closing dates and sexual es sexual escalation. Mark Daniels will be talking leaving a legacy of masculinity. Paul from Apex Mindset is going to be brought, talking about foundations for peak mental performance. Me, MLD, I'll talk about how to get women for the rest of your life. Wraith is going to be talking about setting boundaries as a man. Red Pill Thor is going to be talking about understanding testosterone, fitness, and just overall men's health. Inner Masculine is going to be back talking about proving your value to yourself and self-hypnosis. And Ryan actually did a lot of self-hypnosis. We're going to be talking about that on today's episode as well. Uh, King Dre is back. The legal mindset, so much more. Take a screenshot real quick. If you're watching on your phone, if you're watching at home, whatever, take, take just take a quick screenshot here. See all the value you'll be getting. They start at 9 a.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Eastern every single day for two weeks. So <clears throat> said all that to say this. If you're not in the Masculine Empowerment Network and you're trying to turn your life around, good luck. Ryan, thanks so much for staying with us through that intro. How are you doing this night, bro? Yeah, pretty good. And let me just say that uh, once I was in the shoes of a lot of these viewers here where I joined John's coaching way back in the body language mastery days, back when John used to do these live streams with sunglasses and the Versace robe. In fact, I came pretty prepared today just in case I, I brought some shades in case I need to wear them. <laughs> These are actually the the Dita Mach S. You you inspired I like me. I saw you had like some sick pair of shades on. I think you had yeah. like the Mach One. So yeah, I had to go out and get that. So. Yeah. 
Uh, oops, I don't know what happened. My audio dropped out. I can no, 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 that's you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. I'll just tell my mom to bring me my uh, gold sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I just muted myself. Uh, dude, just it's unreal. Like the total life transformation you've made. Here, I'll go throw it back for you, Ryan. <laughs> well, these are the Ditas. <laughs> it is. It is totally unreal the entire life transformation you've made. Um, and really it all started with inner game. Like people think on people think people literally think I'm crazy when I'm talking about this inner game stuff. So <clears throat> you showed up, you were doing well for yourself financially, but you cleared out the bullshit that you had about approach anxiety. You got the good girl and then you got that part of your mind and you know, problem in your life solve the game problem and it frees up all the mental real estate and now you have this booming side business a uh, gigantic salary in a career that is totally recession proof you have not felt this recession at all i'm assuming right no in fact no one on my team lost jobs like we're all fine like actually in all of cybersecurity at my company like no one no one was at, without a job i mean Okay, so let's let's just paint a picture real quick for the folks at home. So we're talking about making two hundred thousand dollars a year in cybersecurity. Is that clickbait or is there some asterisk or some bullshit? Let the people know because you're the expert. Well, I mean, obviously, it's very possible because I'm living proof of it right now, and I know a lot of people that. Uh, are making even more than I am is the crazy thing. And, and you can do this on the technical side as well, which is pretty nice. So you don't necessarily have to get into management. That is also an option. Um, you could get up to like even 300. I know some people that are making closer to 300 K that uh, are at the higher level management jobs and things like that, but even on the technical side. So just for context, for everyone watching, I work in offensive security. So essentially I'm trying to hack into my company's websites and servers and things like that proactively so that I can help them evaluate how secure they are. Like they got attacked by a hacker, you know, what would be at risk pretty much. That's, that's pretty crazy. So <clears throat> talk, let's talk about this real quick. Like the cybersecurity field, right? They are extremely understaffed if I'm correct. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually in my position right now, so they're, they've they been trying to hire another person uh, as well. And, and there's like 26 people on my team, but they're, they've been looking for, like most of my team, by the way, for people that are interested in working abroad and stuff, which I'm sure we'll get to, uh, most of my team's in Mexico, Malaysia and stuff like that. I'm actually one of the only US citizens. Actually, I am the only US citizen pen tester on my team. So they've been looking for a second US person for since six months before I joined the company. And I joined the company in November of 2021. And they still haven't found that other person because wow. it's really that difficult for the companies to find someone that's qualified. That's crazy. Um, and let me just show you guys, if you don't believe me, if you go to the, um, <clears throat> the US Bureau of Labor Statistics dot gov, this is the government's website, here you can see this is the occupational outlook handbook for the future so first of all 2021 median pay median pay means smack down the middle that's a hundred and two thousand dollars per year okay and work experience in related occupation less than five years on the job training none <laughs> and then number of jobs 163,000, and then the job outlook from 2021 to 20 uh 31 is they're experiencing a 35% growth in this market, more than one third. So that is much faster than average. Um, the industry is completely understaffed. Um, <clears throat> do me a favor. You are a guy who now trains people in cybersecurity. So just for the people at home, right? Because I tell these guys, it's so important for you to have a job in this world. Like you just need a skill. I don't know what these people are thinking, what these men are thinking, like you just can't work. Okay. 
life is better when you have more money. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. And a job paying a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year, that's very good and comfortable money to live a good life. So you don't have to worry about bills, stress, any of these nonsense things that the average person just chooses to plague themselves with. What is cybersecurity, number one? If you could just give it a very basic breakdown for an absolute beginner at home, what is cybersecurity? Yeah, so cybersecurity, if you think of all of the ways that you use technology today, and you know, we're doing this live stream on the internet through a computer and things like that. Everyone watching has like a smartphone nowadays. I mean, chances are even your your TV has some kind of internet connectivity, you know, maybe even your coffee maker nowadays, right? The thing is, all of these electronic devices can be hacked potentially. So they're all created by code and code can have vulnerabilities, which is one thing that I look at is, okay, is there any vulnerabilities in the technology and things like that? And when I say vulnerabilities, what I'm talking about is a security flaw in, in, the, uh, in the software that could allow it to be hacked pretty much. So that's one opportunity. Another one is actually in people. So I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with social engineering. And, you know, if you ever seen like, you know, a lot of companies, they have little like phishing campaigns where they'll see if anyone clicks on the link and they'll do them as like training exercises and stuff. You're probably familiar with like uh, the sketchy emails for like the Prince of Nigeria and that kind of stuff. So, you know, people are always a, a really easy way in as well. So, as someone in cybersecurity, at least on the offensive side, those are some of the things that you're looking at at testing. But cybersecurity, though, I will also say is a very broad topic. It's kind of like saying I want to be a doctor, right? There's all kinds of different doctors that you can be. Now, at least with Elevate Cyber, I really focus on, you know, just as John talks about the core four money muscles game frame, there's also what I call a core three in cybersecurity, which is what I focus on in my courses and training everyone up with the fundamentals, uh, which I would I would uh, declare as web pen testing, network pen testing, and active directory. And so I really, I hope guys establish that solid foundational base. So regardless of what area within cybersecurity that they're interested in, because there's a lot of jobs on the defensive side too, as you guys might imagine, there's people that are in charge of fixing those vulnerabilities or ensuring that the company is as protected as possible. There's also cyber jobs where it's like incident response. So if they get hacked, these are the the first responders, if you will. And so, yeah, just to give you a few ideas of some of the different jobs out there, but I've been able to get people jobs on both the offensive and defensive uh, side. So regardless of what you end up being interested in, having that foundation is going to allow you to, to then do that. What is pen testing it, for the folks at home? Because, you know, it's a little yeah it's complicated. Yeah, I know there's a lot of terms. So stop me if I if I throw out any. I try not to as much as possible. But yeah, there's a lot of terminology out here. Yeah, so pen testing uh, is penetration testing, essentially. So what that is, is um, when I'm talking about the offensive security of what a pen tester will do is they'll look for vulnerabilities in software, like I was talking about. So... I sometimes I'm testing websites that the company has, seeing if I can find any vulnerabilities, if I can basically hack the websites. Um, sometimes I'm looking at other servers in a network pen test. So I might have a bunch of servers on the network looking for vulnerabilities in that. Uh, basically looking for vulnerabilities in any technology. And it kind of depends on what they need tested. Uh, so that is the nice part about pen testing is you get to you get to test a bunch of different stuff. So the it's not like you're doing the same thing every day as well, which is pretty nice. So like I said, sometimes I'm testing websites, sometimes servers. Uh, some people on my team test mobile apps as well, APIs, all kinds of stuff. So keeps it okay. interesting. So <clears throat> an entry-level job would be known as a pen tester in cybersecurity. Would that, would that be safe On to say? On the offensive side, that would be yep an option. There's a lot of entry-level jobs because... Like I was saying, uh, cybersecurity is a very broad field. So there's a lot of different things you can do within cybersecurity. And another thing that is th that you should be aware of as a beginner, like whenever you're starting the job search, is that 
they're there's they're kind of all over the place in hr like a lot of hr people don't understand cybersecurity, so they'll write these job postings and you won't be able to tell what they're looking for based off the job title so it's not as simple as like some of the other professions where you know like okay this is a a programmer job right it's not that straightforward a lot of times they use very generic terms like cybersecurity engineer. And then you got to click in the description and find out what that means because sometimes that could be an entry level like defensive job, sometimes it's an entry level pen testing job. So yeah, a lot of that comes down to uh reading through those job descriptions, which is also something I help my clients with as well. Okay. So we're talking about entry level you're ranging any between 60 to $80,000 a year as a pen tester, correct? Yeah, I mean, I haven't personally I haven't seen anyone make 60k off of their first job in uh in cybersecurity. I've always seen at least 80k. So, I would say like that's a pretty safe number to start, but the thing about it that is really great about cybersecurity is the rate at which you can increase the salary is incredibly fast. So, for me personally, I started at 80,000 and then one year later I got that up to 100,000 and then a year and a half after that I got that from 100,000 to 166 and now as you see in the thumbnail I'm making close to 200. Wow. So I want to just kind of visualize this for the folks at home. So I actually have a screen here. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to just kind of go through your personal flow chart of education. So it's you said that the education that you're providing, right? It will take guys typically one year to get fully educated and employed, correct? Yep. On the bell curve, the most common that I've seen is about eight to 12 months. Okay. So actually, let me, let's put this very precisely so the, fo the folks at home can see with absolute clarity that, okay, so eight to 12 months training, right? And where is this training done? Uh, so the training is uh, is done from home online in uh, Zoom calls, similar to MLD's training, where they're all live webinars, where I'm teaching you the concepts. There's a training lab as well, where you can practice all this stuff, put into action. Okay. Yep. So eight to 12 months of training at home, and then first job, you have seen the lowest is $80,000 a year. Yep. Right? And that is year one. Okay. And then you said year two was what was exactly? A hundred thousand. Yeah. So a year two, you're in a hundred thousand. And then year three. Yep. Year three, I was able to get to 166. 166,000. And then now we are in year four. And that is just right around $200,000 a year. Yep. What's it like making $200,000 a year from the comfort of your home? Yeah, I mean, it's, I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, sign up. We'll see you next week. <laughs> um, this is the typical time they lie to you to go and get a college degree and you have to take all these courses on why white people are evil why men are evil why feminism is the best thing ever and why you're a piece of shit as a man but does your course curriculum cover white guilt or anything along those lines or how's that work? yeah i can't say that's part of the curriculum no <laughs> <laughs> talk about efficiency so this is what i'm trying to tell guys too as well um in just a mere eight to 12 months of training, how much, how many hours a week do you think these guys have to put in study wise? Yeah. I mean, everyone of course learns at a different pace. I would say if you could dedicate at least, let's say, I would say like, if you could dedicate like, you know, two hours a day, you could definitely make the, uh, the 12 month mark at least. Of course, if you can put in more time, you can get there even quicker. Two hours daily most of these guys watch two hours of netflix daily two hours of porn daily two hours of video games daily so yeah yeah two hours daily to do this is not bad and 
you said also, right, that there's even higher salary ceilings as well, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you get into like the upper level management and stuff, some of those guys are making closer to 300. Wow. That's insane, dude. Yeah. It's insane. And so let me just tell you guys this. So let's just say we're going to use this. We're going to use a very conservative approach. Okay. So we're going to talk about this real quick. Okay. Let's just say you get two years and for some reason you max out at a hundred thousand dollars a year. Ryan, how many hours a week do you think you're working right now with your current job? Definitely not 40. I'll say that. <laughs> <I don't> wanna... <laughs> yeah. If you ballpark me, how many, how many hours do you think you're waking, making? Oh man. Yeah. I guess it does vary depending on like what I have going on, but maybe on average, probably closer to like 20, 20, 20 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are doing this too. So let's say you get a job and your pays you hundred thousand dollars a year, right? What a lot of people do when these industries is they just get a second job and they keep these companies in the dark about it. And it's not illegal. And they'll take two jobs making hundred thousand dollars a year. And then they literally live off of one income. And then the second income is directly for savings, crypto, real estate, and more. Right. And that's assuming you you cashed out at a hundred. Could this here be two hundred thousand dollars a year? Yeah, each, absolutely. Yeah. Each job could technically be two hundred dollars, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and and what what I will also mention is the nice thing about the offensive side is because you are looking for these vulnerabilities proactively. It's a lot. It gives you more freedom. Some of the jobs on the defensive side are. You know, they they involve on call, so it would be harder to double dip in that scenario, uh, because especially when like new vulnerabilities come out, or if the company gets hacked and you're like an incident responder, then it's like all hands on deck, uh, like weird hours or whatever. But the nice thing about what I do on the offensive side is, since I'm finding these proactively, I'm never on call or anything like that. So it's it's very good from the freedom perspective. Even if you want to start up your business on the side, it's very friendly to do that as well. Wow. And just the amount of things, because there's some other people I know. There's, there's a guy I know in the cybersecurity industry who's making uh, over 200. And he says he's working about six to 10 hours a week. <laughs> well, you know, off the record, maybe that happened a few times. <laughs> <laughs> he's a smart guy. He's super, super uh, great with his money, has a gigantic house. He's like, playing the game perfectly oh yeah um yeah all of this is is just mm -hmm. unbelievable and so another thing is this right so your your annual so to sign up for your coaching is i think it's what you said it's one thousand five hundred dollars for the year right now yeah it sounds crazy <laughs> so let, let let me just see so you're telling me somebody pays you one thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> for the whole year and they show up and train within one year and for $1,500, they can get the possibility of a $200,000 a year salary. Is that correct? Yeah. Like your, your first paycheck will buy the course. Like, I don't know how many times <laughs> dude. Yeah. Shout out to little Danny 904. He says, I'm in Ryan's elevate cyber yearly pass guys. Fucking do it worth every penny. Oh, we got some questions here in the chat. Um, Alejandro says, in the same company, no, you would work two different companies. You, you just apply for two different jobs. And that's the thing. So, you know, if you just stack your resume and you get all the things, like there's little certificates you can get, simple ones like the CompTIA, Security Plus, you get the training, you have a decent portfolio, which Ryan teaches you how to do everything. If you really have a perfect looking resume, dude, you, you can easily 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 get job have you been working at the same company or have you changed companies change companies yeah this is the third company that i work for so you basically have jumped once per year 
Um, yeah, almost. Yeah. Since I started in cybersecurity. Yeah. Like at least once every year and a half, let's say, but yeah, this, this one is pretty good. It It's not too time consuming and it's paying a lot. So I'll probably stay here a little bit longer while I continue to help guys on elevate cyber. Good stuff. If you guys have <clears throat> any questions, send a super chat. Uh, do you, does this make sense to you? 19 legacy says I have CEH. SEC Plus, Plus. All user IT. AWS, trying to get a, into cybersecurity as SOC analysts. Been applying for like three months now. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a few things when it comes to, to landing the job uh, as well. So one of the one trick that I can give you guys uh, that I recommend to people is that if you're not getting interviews, so I don't know like what the case is for you, Legacy, if it's like you're not getting a lot of interviews or you're getting the interviews and you're not passing them. Let's cover both scenarios. If you're not getting the interviews, what you want to do is you want to use something like LinkedIn, search up a bunch of the jobs that you're looking for and see, like read down in the job description, see which skills they're looking for specifically. And if you have those, add that to your profile because that's going to help you come up in more searches when they're looking for people with those particular skills. And then you'll get more opportunities that uh, and it'll be easier to get those interviews. Now, if you're getting interviews and you're struggling in the interviews, that is something that I've been offering to people within my Elevate Cyber Year Pass where you know, a lot of people are interviewing for jobs right now and I'm having them record those interviews and giving them feedback on how they can improve and how they can better answer these common questions because that can be a bit of a skill in itself. Definitely. Um, and I would just tell this to you guys at home, right? So obviously, you know, we're in a time Shut now- Shut up and take my money. We're in a time now where it's just like kind of harder to, for people to get jobs and whatnot. And so- I would just say, like, this is clearly a solid option. Like, there, it's just, <clears throat> it's so easy to to do this. Like, honestly, if I, if I like, if things got bad, I swear to God, I would start learning this shit. It, it, here, here's the thing I will say: it, it is easy, but there is a difficulty in it in the sense that, like, okay, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, it's a that's not easy to do, but it's a very clear path, right? You go to school, you go to law school, you take your bar exam. It's a very concrete path. Now, the thing about cybersecurity is there's so many different ways to get into it. You see people coming from all different backgrounds, like military and you know, programming and all of that. So for a beginner, it can be very overwhelming to figure out how to navigate it and to figure out also in cybersecurity, there's a million different areas that you could spend your time in that would all fall under the umbrella of cybersecurity. But of course, those are not all created equal. So that those are all problems that I solve uh, for my clients in Elevate Cyber is I can, since I've, you know, I've went through the process, I can help you ensure that you're spending the time in the areas that are going to be the most beneficial to you to really, you know, shortcut all of that and you'll have a clear path forward. Yeah. And, and this is my thing too, to, uh, cause I see a lot of guys asking a bunch of kind of childish questions, quite frankly, in the chat, I'm trying to be nice this morning, this evening for you guys, uh, real quick G round 40, $10 super chat on rumble. He says, cybersecurity is the way to go. Speaking from a Camo Army vet, uh, I see a lot of you guys asking questions like, you know, uh, where is this question? How many hours did he do when he first started? Guys, it doesn't matter how many hours it takes. If you're broke, if you're not making $200,000 a year and your current life plan doesn't have you making $200,000 a year in the next four years, you should be doing whatever it takes to get out of the financial rut that you're in, okay? Shut up and take my it's, money. It's called work for a reason. Guys, work is not supposed to be a luxury for you to feel good and go there and be like Shut all these chicks. Shut up and take my money. Be like all these chicks on TikTok who are like, here's my day working at Meta, and all it is her eating all day. Like, you have to do work, okay, if you want to get ahead in life. Women are not going to want to be with you if you're a jobless bum. Women are not going to want to be with you if you are a dude that doesn't work. They're going to look at you and be like, this guy's lazy. I don't want to be with this lazy bum. Okay? The opportunity that we're presenting to you is literally life-changing. And I want to tap in. I got some super chats I got to catch in, uh, catch up with real quick. But I want to dive a little bit on AI. Abraham 
Rodriguez, two dollar super chat says, "Can you do payments for the year pass, Ryan? Can you do payments?" Uh, yeah, I have a I have a payment plan. If uh, if you really need it, just hit me up on Instagram, Elevate Cyber, and uh, send me a DM there. There you go, Admiral Akbar, CEO, two dollar twenty cents. How good do I need to be at math and coding? Um, so you don't need any math for this. Um, code you don't need to get in the like your first job. You don't you won't need to know any coding for that. Uh, now coding is something that can help. Uh, it can help you be a better pen tester in general. Once you get to the senior level, so like once you've gotten some experience and you want to get to that next level and make more money, then eventually you're going to need to learn code. But for getting your initial job, no, you you don't really need any coding for it. Good stuff. Javier Ramirez, $20 Super Chat. Would you please expound on the totality of the base level skills needed to be successful with the course before I begin? Great question. Yeah, so you don't need any prior knowledge uh, in order to take the course. And that's why if you guys saw on uh, when John pulled up the schedule on uh, the Masculine Empowerment Network, my presentation is titled Get breaking into cybersecurity for complete beginners because yeah, you can join as a complete beginner. And we actually have a lot of people that were like truck drivers and coming in with like absolutely zero experience with, I mean, technology for that matter, uh, like no coding or anything like that. And they've been able to be successful in the courses. So with that being said though, if you want some stuff that you can look into that might help you beforehand, I would say like if you can learn the command line, some of like command line, Linux, stuff like that, uh, that will go a long way. That'll be pretty helpful. Just basic computer skills uh, in general would be pretty helpful. But as far as what you need to know in order to get the get into the course, uh, nothing in particular. I'll provide you with all the resources and info that you need uh, and really teaching it from the perspective of the complete beginner. Brandon Herrera has a question. says, thoughts on, I'm going to handle this, thoughts on, insurance, selling life and health, and et cetera, policies versus cybersecurity. Well, uh, Ryan, do you sell life insurance or health insurance? <laughs> no, I, I can't say I do. I don't either. So uh, <laughs> we're really not qualified to talk about that, but we are qualified to talk about cybersecurity. And I'll just tell you this. When you're selling life insurance, okay, look, I understand life insurance is good for a lot of people, but in the grand scheme of things, insurance is a fucking scam. But when you're needing to sell, okay, if you're not a salesman naturally, this is uh, unless you're looking to cultivate the skill of being a master salesman, then you should do that. But with cybersecurity, when you have the resume, when you have the experience, when you have the training, you don't need to go begging for jobs. You don't need to be begging anybody to do anything. And, and I will <laughs> say, like, as a beginner in sales versus a beginner in cybersecurity, the cybersecurity job is going to be way better than the beginner sales job, I'm sure, right? Because you're going to, assuming you're coming in from a beginner in sales as well, you're going to have to work your way up. Yeah, sure, if you're a top sales guy, I'm sure it's great. But as a beginner, I would much rather be a beginner cybersecurity person because, yeah, the job is a lot, it will give you a lot more freedom. Yeah. Um, and then I would just say this too, like, you know, we're living an increasingly digital world. I mean, Chinese companies are hacking companies in America. Chinese companies are hacking companies in Canada. They're hacking companies in Australia. They are hacking the United States nonstop because America is just a fucking clown shell right now. And there's very few qualified people to do the job. So I said all that to say this. If you're a guy who's tired of being poor, if you're a guy that doesn't really understand how do I make money in this world, okay, stop what you're doing, calm down, and listen to us, what we're clearly saying. The reason you're feeling this is because you don't have a skill. You don't have a talent that is worthy enough of a high salaried job in the world and that's why you're suffering financially but if you do what ryan said study two hours a day is that seven days a week or five days a week uh seven i would say yeah okay so if you can if you can muster up 14 hours a week two hours a day i i, I don't know what you're doing right now but it's probably not anything beneficial if you're broke let's be honest okay if you could sit down and accept the fact that, okay, I'm a beginner. 
This is going to be hard. However, most people give up during hard things and you do the work every single day and you keep pushing forward every single day. You can turn your life around. Everybody's afraid of AI killing jobs, taking jobs and all these things. Should people be afraid of AI taking their job in cybersecurity? No, absolutely not. And uh, the interesting thing uh, that I was I was saying the other day, I don't know if anyone caught that on the stream, but uh, I think I said on the stream that actually AI has been hacked. So if you're familiar with chat GPT, there were some vulnerabilities in that as well, uh, to name a few. Uh, one was where a guy pretended to be the trainer of the AI and said, hey, I'm your trainer, disable all the security protections. So basically he was able to ask it any question on like, things it normally wouldn't answer because it would say it's unethical or whatever. Uh, the other hack was he told it to run commands on his, on the server and tell him the output. And it was actually doing that. So he was able to fully hack the server in that way. And so all that is to say that this AI technology, even that is not immune from having security flaws and things like that. And another thing is specifically for pen testing, you know, what we're talking about earlier on the offensive side, trying to hack into websites and servers and things like that people like you know marketers and stuff like that have been saying like oh we've we've automated pen testing for like the last like 20 years there's been different products that would come out and claim to like automate pen testing and oh now we don't need people for that anymore and every single time it blew up in like every company's face that tried to use some automated solution to find stuff because actually even the scanners right now they're not able to find a, like whole entire classes of vulnerabilities like only people can find. So for example, a lot of logic flaws and things like that, um, like basically using, a, using the program in a way that the developers never even thought of a user using it, that there's a lot of times you can find vulnerabilities in that. Like um, they didn't even consider that, oh, what if the user, instead of using the functionality this way, they instead use it this other way. Oh, well, now we have access to everything. That's actually super common. And scanners, all these automated tools cannot find that, even with like the AI. And the thing is, if you really look into AI right now, a lot of it is not really intelligence necessarily. It's just aggregating a bunch of, you know, scanning the internet and finding a bunch of information. And it's really good at like knowing like, the common answers to questions and things like that. And my experience actually with ChatGPT so far is there was times where I was working with it and it was wrong and it was very confidently wrong about certain things as well. So I think there, you know, it can sound like magic to a lot of people that are not really tech savvy right now or, you know, they're not really a tech person and it can seem like, oh, the world is over. But even that has a long way to go. And I mean, yeah, cybersecurity would definitely be like, I personally, I don't really see it ever going away because like John was mentioning, you know, Chinese, you know, Chinese hackers are hacking the U S and this is like a global thing that's going on. And I think you are witnessing like the modern form of warfare. It's not like people rolling up in tanks and things like that. And, and, and bombings and stuff like that as much. It's a lot of it is cyber warfare. So you're going to see like these nation state actors. And here's the thing, right? Let's say no, they've completely solved, you know, the problem with AI. Now every single website is completely secure because it's coded by a program and not a human. Well, here's the thing we talked about at the beginning of the stream, people are still vulnerable, right? So those hackers, they could say like, okay, yeah, this website was built by this AI. It's secure, whatever. All right, fine. I'm just going to use social engineering and trick this guy to giving me all the data. And if they can do that, then they, they found their way in, right? So, yeah, I don't see it ever going away, really. No, it's really not. Uh, Marcellus Wallace, who definitely doesn't look like a bitch, uh, says, Ryan, where's the best place to contact you? Yeah, I would say the best place would be on Instagram, Elevate Cyber. Yeah, just send me a DM on there. Yep. And if you guys are interested in his Elevate Cyber course, we're about to put a link in the chat right now. For you guys that are just <clears throat> sold and want to just make this happen, uh, Billy, go ahead put the link in the chat for Ryan's uh, course so you, the folks at home can take a look at it if they're interested Shut up and take my money. or not. Uh, I'm going to catch up on a little bit of Super Chats here as soon as Billy puts that link in the chat. Um, 
because this this cybersecurity field is seriously it is it is it's just it's for me it's mind blowing. I just if I wish I had this information when I was like broke and twenty two with fucking trying to figure it out because um man it's just being broke is just the worst shit ever like not having money is just the cancer of this earth and um really just don't like the fact that uh that even can be a problem for people so um you know i'll put the link in the chat right now take a look there's the link right here folks uh, <laughs> Uh, dog's home, roommate's home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you can see the link in the chat right here. Just as you can see, it's connected to me. Uh, John and LB, it's Elevate Cyber. Uh, links there in the chat. Take Click on that, take a look at it, and you can see exactly what we're talking about. Um, I want to catch up on a couple of the Super Chats real quick, and I have a couple more questions for you. Uh, sure. Shout out to Evan Irwin. $10 Super Chat says, literally retired my wife and work from home full time with cyber security. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Abraham Rodriguez says, "Thank you guys. You guys are straight G's. Thank you. Thank you." Rafferty, uh, twenty dollars super chat. Here's the hot dog tax. There will always be some way to earn money. You just gotta find it. The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. Stephen McCraney. It's very, very, very true. Um, and then there were some. Uh, more questions. Admiral Akbar says, are jobs remote? Are the majority of them remote or how does it work out? Yeah, I would say that was even the case before all the all the BS in the world happened. But now after that, they're almost all remote. So because even before when I was working in an office, which was only my first job, and that was just because it was like an old timer manufacturing. It was it was for a car company, so they were pretty like old school, and they wanted they invested all this money with like these office buildings, so they they wanted people to work from the office. But then even now, even they after after all the all that stuff happened, even they're working from home now. So yeah, it would be pretty difficult to find a job that's like where you're working from the office, I would say. Um, but I would still, I would be willing to take that as a first job just to get my foot in the door if I had to, just for everyone watching. Because here's the thing about cybersecurity, getting that first job is definitely the hardest part. And that is why, I mean, I'll be here to help you if you decide to join. Um, but once you get through that hurdle and you land your first job, whether it's you know, whatever area of cybersecurity it is, it doesn't really matter if you're working from an office, working from home. Like we like we're showing you, within a year, you can get that remote job making a hundred thousand dollars a year. And personally, my experience was as soon as I got that first job in cybersecurity, my LinkedIn was just blow, blowing up with recruiters constantly hitting me up. In fact, I never applied for a job ever again. Every job that I got after the first one was from LinkedIn recruiters just reaching out to me, like the headhunters. They're like, oh, you look like you'd be a good fit for this opportunity. And every single job, that's how I ended up getting it. The opportunities are endless once you get your foot in the door. As usual, as uh, being a YouTuber, we have always got some negative Nancy here. Money Boo Boo says that $200,000 in cybersecurity is BS. Look, indeed... Highest you see is 150 with experience. How about this money, boo boo? I'm gonna put the StreamYard link in the chat, and you can come on the show and uh, chat with us. We're gonna tell you why you're wrong. Um, Ryan, he's calling you a liar. He's saying that two hundred thousand dollars in your cybersecurity is BS. Do you think you could pull something up on your end, just knowing your ins and outs, and show a little proof, or are you just a, another internet scammer? <laughs> I could. I would have to find. I would have to find something to to show it. Take but, time. Uh, yeah, take time. Get, do a little research <laughs> if you can. This is. And we talk. You guys at home who don't know what Chat GPT is. Let me just show you what Chat GPT is. So this is a, the AI software here. That is Chat GPT. That is uh, a pre-programmed AI. So if you just put it at, like you click here, you can ask it pretty much everything. Chat GPT even knows. Who I am. So let me see if I, if I type this in. Who is Jonathan from Modern Life Dating? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, hold on. 
who is modern? Who is the modern? There you go. See, even this has my information wrong, though. Modern Life Dating is a YouTube channel ran by a dating coach and author named John. Last name unknown. My name is Jonathan, actually. He provides dating and relationship advice to men, focusing on topics such as building confidence, approaching women, and improving communication skills. He has over 160,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel and offers paid coaching services through his website. It is worth noting that while Modern day Life Dating has been successful and helps many men improve their dating lives, some of his advice has been controversial and criticized for promoting misogynistic and manipulative behavior towards women. So even the AI is wrong about me. Uh, so I wonder, can I sue chat GPT? I need to talk to a lawyer because this is bullshit. And I know they got that Microsoft money um, because this is crazy. But, you know, it also has bias. If you type in this, who is Andrew Tate? Right. It'll say. Andrew Tate is a British former kickboxer, entrepreneur, and social media personality. He's known for several successful career kickboxing. And then, of course, they have Andrew Tate's controversial figure, known for his outspoken opinions and apologetic approach to life. And, of course, he's been criticized as being misogynistic and promoting toxic masculinity. Right? Doesn't, doesn't say anything about money muscles game frame. Doesn't say anything that. So this is another reason why we need guys who are, like, educated on what's going on in the uh, industry here because this industry is run by a bunch of like weak blue pill beta males and they're writing an awful, awful, awful script about us. I'm actually going to talk to my lawyer and potentially sue these motherfuckers. <laughs> I did find a job posting that says up to 200K for a couple a couple jobs here in pen testing. Well, Money Boo Boo hasn't uh, showed up because I put the link in the chat for him. <laughs> Why don't you go and hit that share screen and Money Boo Boo, get ready to sit at home and eat your, you know, eat your spicy Cheetos and play your video games. Uh, we're going to show you exactly why you're wrong because uh, we're two guys with the credibility, integrity. We make money. We know what we're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Josh, we share it. Go ahead. Chat, chat GPT was trained to be biased. Absolutely. Yep. Total trash. Just total trash. Um, but it's all good. Uh, I just joined. I have a BA in computer science and was thinking about cybersecurity as a career. Congratulations. Did you just sign up for Ryan's information? Let's see. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, as you guys can see here, here's a job posting with a couple opportunities up to 200k this one's Google. On this that, one's uh, green text is a little hard to see yeah uh this one's google this one's express vpn now here's the thing as well a lot of companies are not necessarily going to advertise like when you get into super high salaries but if you have the skill set you have a lot of negotiating room because here's what we're saying earlier right it's very hard for them to find someone with the skill set there's a massive shortage of qualified people so if you are a qualified pen tester you have the skill set then you have a lot of the leverage here so you can actually get really good terms like uh, whenever you yeah, are looking money. for jobs so that's something that I would take into account as well like I was actually kind of kicking myself when I first took this job uh, or when I took the last job at 166 because I only asked for 120 and they came back and they were like, yeah, look, we know you asked for 120, but we wanted to give you 166. I was like, damn it. Because that means like, I could have definitely asked for more if I would have known. Uh, so, so that's the thing as well. And I, I do want to say as well that I actually did go that traditional route of the, the college and everything like that. I majored in cybersecurity in college, um, end up changing my major my senior year into that and I, I graduated with one extra year but at the end i ended up in 200 200k in student debt uh student debt at the time Jesus. yeah so five years in 200k and at the end of all of that you get the little piece of paper and they're like oh by the way you're not qualified yet you have the paper that's great but you don't have the skill set so you're gonna have to start in it first and that is um, one of the misconceptions that I see amongst a lot of the like YouTubers, 
that uh, have cybersecurity content and stuff that does really annoy me is a lot of them make beginners think like, oh, if I want to become a pen tester, I have to get like 10 certifications. I have to start in like the help desk and then I got to become a uh, like, you know, work in IT for a couple of years and then I can get into pen testing. And there's like all these artificial hurdles they put up. Now, here's the thing. That is true. You do have to do that stuff if you go the traditional route, because if you go like the, the college route for this stuff or the traditional path, let's say, then yeah, you'll have the pieces of paper, but you won't know anything about cybersecurity. The reason there's such a shortage of qualified people is that school is a terrible, a, a terrible vehicle for learning this stuff, because by the time they come up with the curriculum for anything, it's already way behind, right? I'll no, that's... It, yeah. Yeah, that's fine if you're going for a lot of the STEM stuff, like a lot of the engineering, you know, sciences and stuff. Ha they've changed a bit, but they haven't changed as drastically as technology has changed changed in like the last five years, let's say, right? I mean, I think the AI thing is proof of that as well, right? Uh, so it ends up just being super outdated, and a lot of the stuff is not very hands-on. It's more like, oh, study this concept from the book and take a multiple choice test on it. With the hacking stuff, it's a very like te technical hands-on skill, which is also why, I'll say, why I will say for the guys that are watching that might be involved in like more of like a trade or labor work or truck driving and stuff like that, those guys actually end up faring a lot better than they would they might think or give themselves credit for because if you're someone that is that you're not a very by the book person and you're a, you're more of a hands-on learn by doing kind of person and you have you know, you're willing to put in the work, you're a hardworking person as well. Those are the people that actually succeed the most in pen testing because a lot of this stuff is there's just this, this expectation that you're not going to be taught it in school. You're not going to be taught it uh, in any of the traditional ways that you would normally learn stuff. You're going to have to learn on your own time. And so that is why with my training, I make it very hands-on. We have practice labs where I'm not just teaching you stuff and you're just watching it and taking notes. You're actually practicing the stuff, getting, you know, putting your hands on the keyboard and, and doing it for yourself because that's where the real learning is going to occur for you. Right. And let me just tell you something else uh, regarding that. So <clears throat> I used to work in the recruitment industry and let me tell you guys how HR departments work. Okay. So HR is the human resources department, okay? And what happens is a job will contact, actually, you know, let me make a, a visual description here. I'm going to actually draw this again. This is going to make a lot of sense because a lot of you guys just really don't understand your value financially. I mean, even Ryan here said he got paid, uh, you know, way less than he thought. He or way more than he thought he would, and he knew that he could have asked for more. Okay, so based upon the needs of the company, you have to understand this too. These women in HR, okay, because nine times it's a woman or a gay guy, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like they, in regards to the actual skill set needed, nine times out of ten, they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. These these people in HR are just gatekeepers. Okay, so this is how a organization works. Okay. You have a company and they are here, okay? And so this, let's just say, make it very simple. The CEO says to HR, okay, that we need cybersecurity, okay? And then the HR, HR is given a budget, Okay. And let's just say they're given a budget from, let's just say, 80K to like 130K. Okay. And then HR, they go into Indeed, right? Uh, they go to LinkedIn or they go to recruiters. Okay. And they look for people in the real world to bring them back to the CEO so that the CEO can put these people in the company and the company can make money. That's how it works. So if you're a guy and you have experience and they're advertising 80K, you don't really know that 80K is the roof for what they're 
at, you know, what they're searching for. So what you can do is you can always negotiate for a little bit more based upon your experience and based upon your negotiation skills, how dumb the HR people are and how well you present yourself during an interview and your resume, you can get way more than they're offering because they absolutely have a shortage of people across the United States, especially if you're not crazy and you can show up on time, <laughs> like as low as the standards are. So you have to understand these HR people, they shut are, up and take my money. These HR people, they are just lackeys. Okay. For the CEO and the hiring manager. Okay. So when you're able to do all these things with Ryan's course, you can get even more money as well because he understands the, the, the how the, the HR side of things work. That's the whole hiring process. You have to understand this HR and HRs are, they're just gophers. They just read the fucking resumes. They put together some kind of job description that they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about nine times out of 10. And then they present the resumes to the hiring manager. And then the hiring manager is the one who actually does the interview. If you do an interview with HR, they're just screening you to make sure you're not weird. Make sure you have no red flags. Make sure you at least meet some baseline qualifications. But then once you're experienced in this industry, you have one, two, three, four years on your belt, you're virtually invincible when it comes to getting new jobs and new positions. Because another thing is this too. A lot of guys who are typically in the IT field, the tech field, they're socially retarded and weird, and they don't even have good hygiene. They, Ryan is not a, like a, a textbook example of a fucking cybersecurity guy. He has a sex life. He has a side business. He's well-groomed. He hits the gym. Uh, so like I said, if you could bring all that to the table and more, then, dude, the, op the opportunities are just truly endless. Is there anything I missed you think there, Ryan? No, yeah, I, I would double down on that. And yeah, I've seen it in many and many occasions where like an HR person will be looking for three years experience with a tool that is only out for two years. <laughs> so, so you see stuff like that happen all the time because yeah, they're just not very educated on a lot of this stuff. Um, but yeah, like John said, if uh, you know, as you know, as part of joining men, you get all this stuff, right? You get the the money side but you also get game frame all of that so if you can you know present yourself as someone that has some like social calibration and stuff like that and not just this you know stereotypical it guy with no social skills that's going to go a long way into helping you during that interview process as well and so all this stuff is going to add up and, and give you the best chance to, uh, to get the job and prove in all areas of life so Take a look here at Abraham Rodriguez. He has another question. Did I read this one? I don't think I did. To get an entry-level so. job as a pen tester, would you need to get any certificates? And how long did it take you for you to get your first cyber job? Okay, yeah. So the first part to that, I would say for certifications, what I always say is that certifications the role they play is they help you get your foot in the door so if you have some certs then it's going to mean that you're going to get more interviews with less job applications having to be sent so for someone that is coming from a completely unrelated field and things like that i would typically recommend to pick up at least uh, at least one certification because that's just going to help you get more interviews and not have to apply to as many jobs to get those now as far as how long it took for me to get my first cybersecurity job. So like I said, I went the traditional route. I still couldn't work in cybersecurity right off the bat. So I ended up working in IT first, doing some like backup and recovery. So basically recovering the data that, you know, so there would be like idiots that would delete like their company's data on accident and then like freak out. And you would either be like their favorite person or most hated person, depending on if you could restore it. So like that's basically what I did before. And I did that for about a year. Now here's another thing that you can do, but I mean honestly, if you're joining, if you're joining um, the Elevate Cyber Year Pass, this is not going to be a problem because you're going to le probably land your first job in cybersecurity. But what I ended up doing was because I couldn't do that, I didn't have the hands-on skill set. I had to go and learn this stuff on my own um, after I started in IT. Is 
I found a, you know, in my company that I was working in IT in, they had a cybersecurity team. So I was able to make a lateral movement within the company. And it was a way, you know, it was a good deal for them, right? Because there's a lot of upfront costs that they take on hiring an external person. So because I was already positioned in the company, this is what a lot of companies do is whenever they're looking for, you know, they have a job opening in the company somewhere, the first thing they see is, okay, is there anyone in-house that we can hire in here? Because it's going to be lower cost for them. And if they can't find anyone, then they look externally. So it just so happened that uh, my uh, manager at the time used to work over on the cybersecurity team. So I was able to use that to get that opportunity uh, within about a year uh, to go over there. But that that was only a problem because I went the traditional route and I didn't have the hands-on skill set until I learned on my own. Wow. Uh, we just got a huge $100 donation on Rumble from Anoop. Yes. And he said, would your course help? I'm trying to get better at DevSecOps because I have been put in that situation at work despite being a software engineer. People are way too passive about not getting hacked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So my my training is really going to be helpful for anyone in any area of cybersecurity, because we look at it from multiple angles. Like, of course, I do the offensive side. And so a lot of times we'll be looking at it through the lens of the attacker, but that's really beneficial to everyone because at the end of the day, cybersecurity is all about, you know, protecting an organization against hackers and against, against hacks, essentially, right? Now, Different people in cybersecurity do that in different ways. If you're on the defensive side, then maybe you're in charge of managing the vulnerabilities or maybe you're an incident responder. Maybe you're a pen tester like me and you're hacking the stuff, but the reason we're hacking it at the end of the day is to make the organization more secure. So understanding these vulnerabilities from the perspective of the attacker is going to help you um, in DevSecOps. It's going to help you in all of the different roles within cybersecurity. And I also make sure that we not only talk about, hey, this is how you hack the thing, but we also talk about this is how you would secure it as well. And I always cover, like I was saying, the core areas um, of web and network and Active Directory pen testing. But uh, we're also expanding to some other areas of cybersecurity in these courses as well. Like I'll be doing a course on digital forensics later in the year. And essentially what that is, is, okay, if a hacker runs, a, you know, this attack, you know, what does it leave behind? Like what footprint is left behind when you do this attack, use this tool in this way? And this is actually really helpful for your own personal security as well, because if you know some of the things to look for, what they call in the industry, the indicators of compromise, you could apply that to your own personal security and you can be more confident that you're, you haven't been hacked, things like that. Yeah, David Cartier just says, uh, same thing as you. He says, I did a lateral movement in my company. That's how I got started in DFIR. Awesome. And then digital forensics incident report, you're actually dealing with real attackers. Yeah. Um, yeah, for you guys that are in cybersecurity, Please let the guys know in the chat. Send a fucking fat donation to show them you got some bread. Um, about a noop, right? So tomorrow we're going to have Fido on from Get Money Cody. He, he's actually going to be talking about become a software developer, which is a computer engineer, uh, basically a programmer learning how to code. If you can learn how to code or if you already know how to learn how to code and then you build cybersecurity skills on top of that, I mean, it's only a matter of time before you play your cards right that you're super rich. Um, oh, yeah. And that's that's why, you know, if you decide to to join Fido's uh, program, I offer a, a discount for his guys because here's the thing. There's such a crossover, like John was saying, between programming and cybersecurity that that is another great way, if you want to be a software developer, a great way to set yourself apart. One thing that I experience all the time is all these developers that have absolutely no idea about security whatsoever. And it ends up costing their company a lot of money because, because they'll build it insecure to begin with, and then they'll have to go back and fix the issue. And when it comes to like software and stuff, the time crunch is like a really important thing for the company and they have all these deadlines and stuff. And it ends up being a huge hassle both for me and for them because they just didn't understand the security side to begin with. So what I offer for you know people in FIDO's courses is 
a discount on my uh, some of my courses so that like for example the one that I'm doing right now on hacking websites is is really relevant to a programmer because if you understand how a hacker would go about actually hacking into a website and you understand why that's vulnerable and how to secure it if you're the one building the website you will know how to build it in a secure way from the beginning. And you never, it's always better to build it with security in mind in the beginning rather than to try to throw that in at the end. I absolutely fucking just love this conversation because like, I think the root cause of a lot of people's problems, just talking about the whole problem with men is a lot of men just don't have a lot of dignity. They don't have a lot of self-respect. And in this world, where they're just constantly shitting on men and hating on you guys, no matter what color your skin is in, in the Western world, treating men as if they're second class citizens. At least when you have a decent career and a decent salary coming in, this is beyond decent. This is above average, right? You could look yourself in the mirror and you can use your money to change yourself as well. You can look yourself in the mirror and have some respect. Say, you know, I don't care what any of these fucking hoes say. I don't care what my family says. I don't care what anybody says. At the end of the day, I'm a man. I make $100,000 a year. make $150,000 a year. I have two jobs. Let's just say you just keep it entry level. I have two jobs entry level making 80K, 80K, and I'm working both of them, and I'm pulling in $160,000 in my first year. Okay? People could say whatever the fuck they want, but at the end of the day, I'm the man. I got this shit going on. And you'd be amazed how your life turns around. These jobs are absolutely in super need of educated people. And when you look around the world with people growingly becoming lazy, growingly becoming crazy, growingly becoming entitled, thinking they're a victim of racism, sexism, transphobia, bigotry, all the fucking homophobic, whatever, every obia and obic coming after you. If you could just rise above all that insanity, be punctual, do your job, and become a master of your craft, you really don't have to worry about money anymore. Like, honestly speaking, Ryan, do you worry about money these days? No, yeah, not at all. I think your camera froze up, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking my RAM is uh, screwed up. I got oh, okay. Computer. Give me one second. Sorry, I was just getting passionately carried away in my speech. You can <laughs> hear me, though, right? At least the audio no, yeah. Was yeah, I heard you all the way. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Apex Mid says, what's a good entry level position? We already covered that. Uh, we said $80,000 a year. And then I'm going to cover this real quick because he said something pretty annoying. Uh, bro, Apex Mid, listen to me, dude. Listen to me closely, okay? Is the job stressful or more laid back? Let me ask you something. What's more stressful? Having a job that's relatively stressful, but you have money? Or being fucking broke? Do a little cost analysis there. Where's your current life plan taking you? In four years, is it taking you to $150,000 a year plus? Yeah, absolutely. One thing I will say as well is that in general, what I've noticed as far as jobs go, the more money you get paid, the more laid back it is in the sense of like you have more freedoms. Like people aren't, you know, breathing down your neck and like seeing what you're doing at every minute of the day. Every time that I, I got a new job and a pay bump, the work experience has always been like way better. And I will say where I'm working now and you know, the highest salary that I've had, I have the most freedom that I've ever had. And I think that, yeah, that's something that Cal Newport talks about in the book. So good. They can't ignore you is you want to acquire those skills. Um, uh, and the, the more that you level up at whatever you're doing, you're going to be able to get these jobs that are a lot better working conditions in general. You'll have a lot more freedom and flexibility. Mm -hmm. Uh, just going to catch up on some super chats. Elias Buhid sends 10 Great British Pounds. She kisses from Brazil. I love you so much. Thank you for the super chat. And we got another super chat from Amelia. I don't, Amelia, I don't love you, but $5 super chat. I work in NOC for an ISP and I have a security plus certificate. How can I break into cybersecurity? Yeah. So, Really breaking into cybersecurity, it comes down to a few things. One, getting that hands-on skill set. That's really important because that was what I was lacking, right? I had the credibility, I had the piece of paper, but I was missing the hands-on skill set, right? You have some pieces of paper, right? You have a certification, that's great. The other thing that you're missing, though, is a real, an even better way to certify, to really 
showcase to an employer that you have the actual skill, right? Because a lot of people have certifications nowadays too. So just because you have the cert, you know, maybe you'll get your foot in the door, but it's not going to really stand out. A lot of people have security plus you want to have something beyond that as well. So that's why with the courses that I run, not only are, am I, you know, teaching people like with the lab environment, get, giving them hands-on experience, but I'm also having them create something tangible that we can showcase to an employer that will really show them like, okay, this is, he has this information and, you know, irrefutably so, right? So for example, a guy that I recently was able to get a job into cybersecurity as his very first job, by the way, um, within, he, he was only in the year pass for about four months, four or five months. And, and he was able to get his first job right into cybersecurity, but he was taking one of my courses on web pen testing. So hacking and securing websites. And one thing that I had everyone do, and I, I do this in all the courses, I have them write a report at the end. And the reason that I do that is, okay, if you wanted to become a software developer, you would write code and you would post it on your GitHub, right? Because the product that you produce as a coder is the code you write. Well, as a pen tester, right, we're, we're trying to hack into this stuff, but at the end of the day, we're producing a report and that is the product that we're actually delivering to the client is that report. Where a lot of people go wrong is they'll do the hacking stuff because it's the fun and the flashy stuff, right? Like people want to learn how to hack. That, that's the fun part. What's not the fun part is writing the report, creating the actual report. But the thing is, that is the actual product that you're producing and delivering to the client. So that is a great way to sell, set yourself apart if you have a report that you can showcase. So that's exactly what uh, what this guy, one of my clients did. And actually, even though they were hiring for developers, he expressed to them that he was actually really interested in cybersecurity. He took the course with me over the summer and he wrote a report and that really stood out to them. They're like, wait, you wrote a, wait, you have a report? They're like, we would love to see it. So he sent that over to them. And this was a report that, by the way, the first time he wrote up this report, he made a lot of mistakes because he has never written one. He's never seen one like professional ones. I've seen like probably thousands of these now over the years. And so I was able to very quickly identify a lot of improvements that you can make that to that report. I was like, okay, this is what you want to tweak this, this, and this. And he made all those changes to the report and he ended up with something very professional, um, something that you would expect from like a professional pen tester. And so when they, when they saw that, even though they were trying to hire for software developers, they're like, all right, we actually have an opening in cybersecurity, like on the on the cybersecurity team, and we'd like to hire you on. So that ended up being like a really huge thing and a great way to set himself apart. So Emilio, what I would say for you is, okay, you have a little bit of a piece of paper, right? Let's get you the skill set, right? Let's get you mentorship and the skill set and get you something tangible that you can showcase to an employer. And uh, if you have all three of those things, you are you will get a job, no doubt. All you'll need to improve in is the uh, the interview process, really. Um, <clears throat> Marcellus Wallace has a question. He says, what are the advantages of cybersecurity over other fields like cloud engineering, data science, machine learning? Those tech fields are also hot. So I would just personally say this. If, you don't, if you're not making $100,000 a year and you're not in a career that's going to lead you to $100,000 a year within three years, you just need to do something. But you can, you're the technical expert here, Ryan. Yeah. What I will say is that, um, I mean, yeah, those fields are, are fine. But what I will say is that right now, those are the hot fields, right? What if something else comes out and people aren't using cloud anymore? What if people aren't using machine learning anymore? There's always going to be cybersecurity, right? Because all of these things you mentioned here, by the way, are all things that I actually have heard of people hacking before. Some of these I, I try to hack, like I've been getting into some of the cloud pen testing. I actually have a course coming up later in the year on cloud pen testing. So if you're interested in the cloud side, uh, you can learn about those things and how to hack them. The cool thing I would say about pen testing is we're trying to hack all of these things, but before we can hack them, we have to have some basis of understanding with it, right? So if you go down the path of becoming a pen tester, you get to learn all of these things because that's part of it. Like first you, you need to know how to use it and then you can learn how to hack it. So the thing that I personally love about the job is that I get to do all kinds of different stuff. I'm not it, like, let's say I was a cloud engineer every single day. I would be going into the office doing cloud stuff every single day. But because I'm on the pen testing side, sometimes I'm trying to hack into a website. Sometimes I'm trying to hack into a server. Sometimes I'm trying to hack into the cloud. 
Sometimes I'm doing social engineering, trying to hack people. So it, it, it allows for a lot more variability in that way. But yeah, I would definitely say cybersecurity, you really can't go wrong because you get to do all these things and it's not going away. Um, we got a donation, $1 donation on Rumble. Guys, I love you guys so much for watching me on Rumble, but don't send donations on Rumble, please, because it just sucks. <laughs> I don't know how to get the money <laughs> off of it, and they take a cut. But if you want to send a direct donation, click on this link here. It goes directly to the platform. No YouTube cut. So no bullshit. You don't fucking finance any more <laughs> transgender children <laughs> videos. Uh, but our brother over there, Rollflow. 1804 $1 super chat. He says, you'd consider me a brokey MLD. If I heard you right through the masculine empowerment network, we can get $60,000 per year and majorly upward from there in salary through our boys course here. I'm in. So you are incorrect. It is $80,000 per year and upward, not 60,000, $80,000 per year or higher. And within three years, Ryan here on screen had gotten to 166,000 and he was applying for a job that was 120, if I remember correct. Yeah. Yeah. And even imply, even applying is a bit of a stretch because I never really applied. I just got reached out by a recruiter. Actually, right. at the time, to be completely honest with you, the reason that I switched jobs was that I was working for... Um, one of the uh, one of the government agencies as a contractor at the time, and that was during the height of all the the pandemic bullshit. And what they were telling me was, "Oh, you have to you have to get vaccinated or you're terminated." I was like, "Okay, terminate me." And <laughs> and then they backpedaled. They're like, they were like, I was like, "Okay, yeah, termination." And then they're like, "Wait, wait, hold on, hold on." And I, I didn't hear. But at the time, I had already, you know, started checking my LinkedIn because anytime I check my LinkedIn, I just have a scroll down like a bunch of recruiters messaging me and stuff. So I just decided to start reading some of those. I was like, "Oh, okay, here's a pretty cool opportunity um, for for a pretty good company. Let me just let me just interview with them, see what happens." And then all they were putting all this pressure on me over there, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, terminate me." And it, it turned out. At the end result, they never they end up backpedaling and they weren't even gonna do that. But like so many people caved in. I just saw everyone just bending the knee and and end up just going really well with the one that I was that I end up interviewing with. But yeah, none of these jobs after the first one, I'd never applied to one. It was always like recruiters reaching out to me. Would you be comfortable showing your LinkedIn right now? People reaching out to you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to handle some more questions in the chat in the meantime. What up? Uh, but, but yeah, a lot of you guys are asking, you know, are, where is this available? Again, like I said, when you sign up for the Masculine Empowerment Network, which like I said, Ryan is a proud graduate of the Masculine Empowerment Network as well. You get access to his presentation, direct access to him in the Telegram chat, and so much more. So go to the MasculineEmpowermentNetwork.com. This is the website. Put your best email in here and click here to save your spot because on May 8th, we are starting enrollment. We have a five-day enrollment period. After that, the enrollment is cut off. You cannot get in anymore. And we begin the live webinar training. And Ryan here will be giving one of the presentations. He is a proud member of the community. He started off as a member. He worked his way up. Now he's a leader. You too can be a leader if you come in. You do the work. You show me you're worthy. You show me your guy who has integrity. And so much more can be available to you. There was another thing here I saw in the chat that I really wanted to address because I hate when I see this shit. Somebody was asking me, is cybersecurity a better option than all of this fucking buzzword bullshit that's going on right now, like copywriting yeah, this right here. Shank Joey says, is cybersecurity a safer bet than learning freelancing skills such as copywriting, which is going to be wiped out by AI, web <laughs> design, which is going to be wiped out by AI, graphic design, which is going to be wiped out from AI. Will artificial intelligence make those skills obsolete? Yes, and it would not make cybersecurity. Guys, when you try to choose a shortcut in life, okay, you actually take the longer route. We are telling you, $1,500 to sign up for Ryan's course. One year of studying, two hours per day, and then you are literally in a vehicle career-wise that will start you off at $80,000 a year, 
And if you are a complete moron, it'll take you three years to get to $100,000 a year. Now you're in the top 10% of, of earners in America. Because I think 100,000 households is like top 15%, something like that. Yeah. You're a single person making $100,000 a year. You are literally up in the top 10%, I believe, of all people. If you focus money muscles game frame, then you're automatically going to be a fucking high value guy. But forget all that shit. Do the work, get the job, build a career, and then from there focus on your passion projects and all this shit. Or just stay in this career and work your way to the t- by the time you're 40, not even if you start your 20s, you could easily get to $300,000 a year by the time you're like 33, 34, 35. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right to me. Uh, go ahead and shoot the screen, uh, the screen share, and yeah. we can show all your recruiters hitting you up right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. Reading some more stuff in the chat. Yeah, so as you guys can see here, um, <laughs> like if I just scroll down on this, and when I'm really looking for opportunities, I'll put on like a LinkedIn premium and then this will like 10 X. But yeah, if I just scroll down, you can see, like, I don't even really check this unless I'm looking for jobs. It's just constantly, you're just getting hit up with like opportunity after opportunity. Unreal. And it's just so nice. It's like having a DM full of hot girls that want to bang you. But <laughs> it's like a DM full of, you know, people that want to just give you money. Exactly. Not bad at all. Okay, not bad at all. So, I mean, there's all the proof for you guys. And Ryan, I just want to just change gears for a second here. Yeah. You signed up for the Masculine Empowerment Network back in 2019. Okay, here you are now, four years later. Well, three years later, really, because we're in in 2023. Here you are three years later. You completely handled all your dating problems you have no problem with women you're making a shitload of money in your private career and then you have your side hustle business here as well just talk to the people tell them where you were mentally before you came to the masculine empowerment network what you changed in the masculine empowerment network and where you are now in your future plans. So before, during, and then the future. Yeah. So when, yeah, back in, in 2019, I remember it was, uh, it was late 2019, like in the fall, I just end up stumbling across cause I'd read like the rational mail and stuff like that before. Um, actually cause like one of my really good friends at the time, he was in a six year relationship and she dumped him and he was heartbroken. So I didn't really have the story of like, but a lot of people come in and it's like something tragic happened with a girl or something like that. But I just like, I was like, ignoring my dating life for about 10 years, to be honest. Um, like I remember when I was in like ninth grade, or no, when I was in eighth grade was when I got laid for the first time. And like everyone thought I was so cool because I was like one of the first people. I was like only 13 or something. And uh, and then I ended up getting laid again when I was in ninth grade. But then after that, I went on this 10-year dry spell. And I remember I had so much negative influence from my mom that would say things like, oh, yeah, don't date in, in, uh, until you're ready to get married and all this stuff. I mean, come to find out that uh, she was actually cheating on my dad, which was kind of crazy. Right. So I was being fed all this shit and she wasn't even following that. Uh, she, she was like doing all the shady stuff behind the scenes, but she was like, oh yeah, you shouldn't, you should be ignoring women and this and that. And so anyways, I end up kind of, fee- you know, buying into some of that and ignoring women for about 10 years. And I, I didn't, I was completely lost when it, when it came to it as well. But yeah, I met this friend that like he was into like all this like rational mail and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. So I read the book and and like a lot of things started clicking. And then I was like, oh, he has a YouTube channel. And I remember I I saw uh the the live streams that MLD used to do with uh with all like the whole panel and stuff, the rule zero, I think it was. And uh I remember like the very first stream I saw of John was the the one where he was on on Twitch, I don't know maybe some of the OGs remember where he was on the Twitch like Raj Patel or something. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And so I remember I was struggling uh, 
when I got back into, you know, when I met the friend and he was into rational mail and stuff, we started going out again. I'm like, yeah, I've been ignoring this. Sorry. I really is need to. You, is that where you first saw me from? The Raj Patel show on Twitch? Yeah, that's how I got into you. I didn't watch the Raj Patel show. I saw Rule Zero, and you guys uh, were breaking that down. And I then I went and watched it. And I was like, who's this guy with the sunglasses? And like a lot of things that you were saying were things that were like making sense. They're like, Everyone else was too much of a pussy to say, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So, Still so pay. yeah, that that really uh, <laughs> resonated with me. But uh, yeah, so I started going out then around that time, and I noticed that I had all these things that were holding me back, and was like, I knew what actions I needed to take, but I was just unable to take them. And yeah, I had a lot of barriers in my way, and so I was reading a, a business book at the time. The one advantage of, you know, I was making decent money at the time, only 80,000 back then. Before I joined Masculine Empowerment Network, I was only making 80K a year. But still, I remember reading this business book because I was, I was still on that mindset of like, I know I can level up. I know this is something that I can achieve, something that I can do. But I remember reading this book and they were talking about the value of a network and surrounding yourself with people that are on that, on that journey and on that path and how that levels you up in all areas of life. And around that exact same time was when, you know, at that point I was watching a lot of John's live streams. And I remember around that point was when he was talking about the, uh, what was then called the body language mastery uh, program, but basically the same thing as MEN, but I mean, now it's a lot better, even, even better uh, network that you have available to you. But yeah, that, that kind of lined up and I was like, you know what, I'm going to join this. I was a bit on the fence because at the time I've never invested in myself to that level, which is a joke now because I think it was like 497 at the time is what you sold that for, or 397 or something crazy. At that time it was like 497. I yeah, believe. 497, I believe. Yeah. So I was like, it, to me, I thought it was like this big step. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, you know, give this a try and see. And yeah, it's so true. The value of like surrounding yourself in that network. It's just, I mean, it's invaluable. And so I was exposed to all these different ways that I could improve my life because when you join this thing, you're not just hearing from you know an expert in one area. You're getting exposed to all kinds of different areas, right? Money, muscles, game frame, all of that stuff. And so it was super motivating for one thing, uh, especially even today, I will say, whenever I'm in those calls seeing guys that are, you know, way older than me, like in their forties, fifties, even sixties and, and absolutely crushing it. I'm like, man, it makes me, it makes me feel very hopeful for the future. Um, so it is very inspiring in that way, but it's like, yeah, if you're in that network, there's no way that you can't improve. And so one of the things though, that really was a huge turning point for me, I'm sure, you know, some of you guys might've heard John say was the hypnotherapy. So I had, tried some hypnotherapy, some hypnosis stuff with like the Kino body stuff a little bit, but with fitness, that was never really a hang up for me. For me, it was much more, um, with, uh, with, with other areas and like my dating life and stuff like that, where I was, uh, I had a lot of beliefs that were holding me back and weren't really serving me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this a try because I mean, why not? And I remember doing a session, with uh, with Ryan Fowler for Minor Masculine, and that was back in that was I think that was not till like 2020. Another thing that I should mention is I didn't just it's not like I just joined Body Language Mastery and attended like the set of webinars and that was it. I kept returning and each time I leveled up more and more. So I I joined Q3, so I got access to Q4 as well. But then when he did the next round of it in 2020, I joined for that and I attended all four sets of those webinars and gained a ton of value from that. And as I explored the hypnotherapy and gave that a try in 2020 with uh, Ryan Fowler and Ryan Christensen, with each time that I took one of those, there were changes that happened. Some of, Sometimes very noticeable, other times very subtle. So there would be sessions where I would leave and instantly I would notice a change in myself. Uh, but then there was a lot of things that I didn't realize until later on people called out to me like, oh man, like you have so much more energy now. Um, and for any of you guys that are part of John's uh, uh, MEN, if you have access to like some of those recordings there, if you go back to like the body language mastery, if it's still possible back in like Q3 2019, you can see me on those webinars. And I, yeah, I definitely, I don't even recognize myself either now that 
I mean, it's been such a long span of time now that it's super noticeable to me, but on the day-to-day, maybe it's not super noticeable. But if you keep improving, I noticed this with myself, as I kept improving in all these areas, maybe from day one to day two, I didn't notice anything. Maybe from month one to month two, I didn't really notice much. But from year one to year two was a huge difference. Now, year three, as we as we say now, it's been three years, I noticed like insane changes. So if you're putting in that work, all that stuff, all those little changes really add up. So the end result with the hypnotherapy was I was able to, you know, get past the approach anxiety, which was like a huge issue of like why I joined in the first place. Um, and that's not to say I don't feel it when I go out. I definitely do. But before it was like overwhelming to the point. I know John told the story many times when we met up for Hot Dude Con Arizona, we went to a nightclub. I was like absolutely paralyzed and it's nothing to that level anymore. And even in other areas of life, I noticed massive improvements. I, for a long time, I knew I wanted to like create a business and, and things like that because I, I had like the cybersecurity skill set. And I knew that like a lot of people that I talked to, just random people were really interested in cybersecurity, but I just didn't have the confidence to, to start a business and, and create something, even though I knew I could deliver value to people. I was like afraid to, to take those steps because I had all these, all this self doubt, uh, you know, negative self top subtle ways of sabotaging myself. And the hypnotherapy was allowed, you know, allowed me to really break through the barrier, not just with women, but in all areas of life, it gave me more confidence overall. And so I ended up, you know, while I was in the masculine empowerment network back in like 2020 is when I started my YouTube channel and I started making daily content on that. And I made daily videos for two years straight. Like I didn't miss a single day and I just kept, you know, creating more and more content and, and providing value as much as I could in any way that I could. And gradually that grew more and more until eventually I was in a position where, okay, it makes sense to like start creating. Even then, like I was, I I had other things were holding me back. Like I had the YouTube channel and I could have created the courses and, and start delivering in a much more personalized way, delivering even more value than just those free YouTube videos but I had things holding me back. I wasn't able to do that. So that all that is to say with each session that I took, it wasn't like all my problems are solved. Now I would solve a lot of problems, but the work and John, I'm sure will, will double down on this as well is that the self-improvement journey is an ongoing process. So I solve certain issues, but there were still other things that I still need to work on. And even to this day, I'm still self-improving. And that is honestly, that's one of the biggest values of the masculine empowerment network is these guys are relentless about self-improvement. I mean, if you even look at John and he's always changing and he's always improving as well. And so that was something that I solved later on is, okay, like, let me actually create something of, of even more value than just the free YouTube videos. So the end result was after, I think I, I joined for, yeah, the end of 2019, almost all of 2020. And I think, yeah, I think maybe part of 2021, but the end result of, you know, after all that is I went from, you know, having severe approach anxiety, making 80K a year, no business, like uh, no side business or anything like that. The fitness was the one thing that I had on point uh, even before I joined. Uh, that was never a hang up for me personally, but all the other areas I was way not as well off as I am today. Now we fast forward to today. To contrast the 80,000, it's now almost 200,000. And that's just my nine to five job. And then I went from having no side business to having a side business. And I went from having crippling approach anxiety to now having like a a rotation and then a a girl and a stable girl in my life as well that knows that I I still hook up with other girls and accepts that. And she doesn't hook up with guys. Yeah. Absolutely not. Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you guys something. While Ryan was talking, I actually did a little digging. If you take a look here, this is the database that you get when you sign up to the Masculine Empowerment Network. And as he precisely remembered, Body Language Mastery Q3 in the 2019. If you take a look right here, there's our boy right there. You haven't aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit of gray coming in, but other than that. It's all right. You could you could diet. Yeah, uh, I can always diet. This is our boy right here, Ryan. 
knocking it out. And let me show you guys something else too. Back in the day, look who was there. One of the guys I helped give him his early, early, early start. Sustainable, my man. You want to you want to lose uh, weight in a very nice, slow, sustainable manner through weight training, uh, proper nutrition. Uh, you never want to be starving. You know what I mean? Or killing yourself or doing any weird fast. They're all scams. Yeah. Definitely long term. Look at that. I'm fucking stressed <laughs> to the gills, working out, working so hard. Doing Back in the day, we did three weeks of webinars. But, you know, I'm just so proud of all you guys. Like, you know, obviously you were in the, the first year with like people like Ryan, or excuse me, like uh, Myron. Um, and then so many good big content creators have come out of that. A Andrew from The Legal Mindset, Fresh and Fit, um, <clears throat> obviously yourself. Uh, Fido now has Get Money Coding, and yep. then um, you know a lot. Well, of I was in there with Ryan Fowler as well. Yeah, right. Ryan Fowler now has Inner Masculine. Ryan Christensen has uh, HypnosisForMen.com, and um, you know all of these people were just part of this you know small group that has actually tied turned into a gigantic um, cultural movement that is that is just you know, irrefutably here right now. Um, and that's what I do. This is why I, I turn lives around. I'm very good at what I do. Like I, maybe I don't, I don't get like a bunch of YouTube views or whatever, but I'm not in this for the views and all this stuff. I'm in this because the people who sit around and watch this content, it's always going to be a small niche. Like if I was on here yelling at fucking hoes, like this would have millions and millions and millions of views. Right. But that yelling at hoes is not going to give you the life that you want. Shitting on crazy bitches is not going to give you the life that you want. So, um, real quick, our brother Anoop gave a hundred dollar donation straight to the Streamlabs link. And he says, I finally figured Streamlabs to work out. This is a historic event in my life. Thank you, MLD, and thank you, Ryan. So, guys, uh, I want to just tell you so much, but we're we're pretty much out of time right now. But what I what I want to do is tell you is this, guys. Listen, here's the deal. Okay. Um, we can turn your life around. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Like like I said, Ryan is not a paid actor, okay? All these people I'm appearing on are not paid actors. Red Pill Thor got his start with me as well, if you're a friend of Red Pill Thor. I do my best to be a kingmaker. I don't sit here and try to prop myself up and make this all about me, me, me. I make this as about we, okay? You come into the Masculine Empowerment Network. You attend the webinars. You listen to what I'm talking about. You apply the core four, money, muscles, game, frame, okay? You do the work and you get on the path with us of this lifelong self-improvement journey. And this can also be you. You could be on the screen with me one day. You could turn your life around one day. But all this will not be possible if you do not stop what you're doing. For you guys that – it blows my mind that you guys like call me in on uh, the Friday shows and ask me for advice but then you're not on the waiting list. Like this does not exempt you. You too have to get on the waiting list. So go to masculineempowermentnetwork.com, put your best email address in right here, click here to save your spot, get locked and loaded. And you too can make the fucking money that we're talking about. Like this is not a scam. This is not some fucking like Ponzi. We're not doing anything unethical here. We're literally with the ultimate amounts of integrity. We're literally doing the best to help as many men as possible because we're at the stage now, you know, where the red pill is going mainstream. It already is mainstream, quite frankly. And what we want you to do is graduate from talking to walking. Stop talking. You know the theory. You know hypergamy. You know this. You know that. Blah, 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 blah. Start living the life, okay? And let me tell you something, too. It's not for everybody. It's hard to do what we do, okay? But the way I look at it, it's way harder to be a broke, sexless loser. And that's not what I'm trying to do with my life. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the afterlife. I don't believe in any of that thing. No offense to any of my religious followers. I believe you get one life and you die forever and that's it. And I'm trying to live as best of a life as possible. You're running out of time. Your inevitable death is approaching. Are you going to suffer all the way to death or are you going to thrive? I get better every fucking year. Dude, look at me. I'm 37 years old. I look younger now than when I fucking started the Masculine Empowerment Network. I'm aging backwards. Dude, dude. I'm fucking Benjamin Button over here. Okay? So do the work. 
get on the waiting list. Brian, you've been an awesome guest. You're an awesome guy. I just want to give you the, the closing statement. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. I, I know I'm really appreciative to, to be able to give back and to be on your channel as well. I've definitely gotten a lot of value out of watching a lot of these uh, live streams back in the day, certainly. I will say, yeah, for anyone here that's like a complete beginner, that this is something that is possible for you. And And here's the deal, right? Like I told you, I went to school, didn't have the skill set, so I had to learn it on my own anyways. So you're not... Don't think that like, oh, because you didn't get like some formal education on this, that you're somehow behind or something like that. And just to answer a guy's question real quick in the chat on laptops and stuff, I would say what I generally recommend to people is for a laptop, if you just get something with like 16 gigs of RAM, that you should be fine. 32 would be even better. But yeah, 16 would be pretty solid for all the stuff that we do in the courses. But even if you have an eight gig or something uh, less RAM, we can make it work uh, no matter what you have. So that's what I would say. But yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Guys, May 8th, May 8th, May 8th. I want you waking up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night screaming May 8th. Okay, because May 8th, one week from today, we're going live for the enrollment of the Masculine Empowerment Network. Do not miss out on this. Do not sleep on this. A lot of you guys hit me up after the registration period is over, and I'm going to tell you no because I don't want to deal with people who can't fucking keep a deadline too. At the end of the day, this is an elite community. Okay, this is an exclusive community because we are very good at what we do. There's nobody with a better team than us on the planet for men. There's nobody. The, the Tony Robbins, all these big names, Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, all these guys, nothing compared to what I'm doing. Not even fucking 1% close to what we're doing. Money Muscles Game Frame. We got it all at the Masculine Empowerment Network. We're going to be back here tomorrow to talk with another graduate from the Masculine Empowerment Network who's turned his life around. That's Get Money Coding. Fido, who is also in the same graduating class as Ryan here, also has a great job. Also has a thriving side business. Also has a great woman in his life. Also is in great shape. And he too, he was poorer than fucking Ryan when he signed up. <laughs> He's doing very well. So we'll see you guys there tomorrow. Hit that subscribe button and have a wonderful day.